Hello and a very warm welcome to this latest edition of Talking Germany, the show where we do just that. And with me here in the studio today is a man perhaps who more than any other personifies one of the most potent and popular music genres here in Germany in recent decades. The music is techno, the man is West Bam. Here he is with me. Hello. Thanks very much for joining me here in the studio today it's on Talking to Great stuff. Now, uh, West Bam, known simply to his friends as quite simply Maximilian Lenz, is currently marking 30 years in the music business. Uh, 30 years, that is, as a DJ and a producer. And he's doing so in grand style with a new album that has a host of big names on vocals like Kanye West, uh, Little Wayne and uh, Iggy Pop, one of my favourites, to mention just a few. So there's plenty to talk about and plenty to look forward to. Uh, first question, West Bamber. A, uh, a leading German magazine recently called you, and I'm quoting, the greying godfather of techno. The greying godfather. <laughs> <coughs> That's wonderful, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I like my grey beard. You know, I don't shave no more. <laughs> Just to show everybody, show off my grey beard. Lovely. What is techno? Good question. Um, the traditional uh, definition of techno is it's... Uh, music that sounds like machines and not machines that sound like music. Uh, do, and you say that's the traditional definition? Is that a yeah. definition that you're okay with? You're happy with uh, that? Well, you know, like when we talk of, of techno as like this big youth culture, that, yeah. doesn't, uh, that doesn't apply because, in, especially in Germany, different to, say, England, Techno is the name for everything that was played on the love rate, for everything with the four to the floor beat. They say, ah, oh, this is all this techno. When it goes boom, 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 yeah. it's techno. But um, um, it's, I feel uh, there's a much wider definition then of what techno culture give is. Me the wider, give, me, give me the wider definition in one sentence. Put it into, put it into a nutshell. Well, for me, the, uh, you know, like the word techno always implies is so much about we want to sound futuristic. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you take like big trends, like, you know, when they used to uh, uh, cut up dis old disco records, yeah. you know, that doesn't follow the aesthetics of craft work and of, uh, uh, of the idea. We just use synthetic sounds, you know, you use whatever you can to make modern music. You is, know? is techno still around? Is it still relevant? Is it still out there? It, well, it's, uh, you know, like a lot of people ask me about this and they say, well, in the early 90s, it was such a big thing. And then when I go back to the early 90s and say in Berlin, we talk about two, three small clubs that would play techno. All the rest of the clubs would play something else. Mm -hmm. If you look now in Berlin, you get like 100 clubs playing mm -hmm. this. Uh, you know, back then you had like 20 DJs here in Berlin or maybe 30. Yeah. Now, I don't want to exaggerate, but I, I think like if you count all the, you know, the people from Canada or whoever who are DJs that came to Berlin, you get like 10,000 DJs these days in Berlin. I guess, you know, 10,000, 10, 10, <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, you know, and, that's a and, and, and I've heard like a, a, a figure that uh, half of the kids these days want to become DJs. Half of the kids well, are know? DJs. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, the well, they're, they're bedroom homes, yeah. DJs, right. Well, let's talk about you so, as a DJ. I'm looking at your hat all the while. It yes. says, kick it like a sensor, yes. yeah? Yes. That yes. is one of the tracks off of your new album. Yes. Gotterstrasse, mm -hmm. yeah, The Street of mm -hmm. the Gods, yeah? Mm -hmm. Just uh, tell me about the album, because you're talking about techno. Is the album techno, or is it something more sort of mainstream? Is it pop? Yeah. Well, you know, I think pop is whatever is popular, so uh, I would hope <laughs> it to be pop, to, uh, you know, in that way. But, um, uh, well, I personally, I've, uh, my, my interest was never to follow or fulfill, like, this definition of electronic. You know, that's, for me, that's, Kraftwerk is the group, that perfectly does that mm. since the late 60s, 70s, you know? So, and I don't think there's so much space for like an, uh, a new generation of people to really uh, make this into their own thing. So, um, I, I basically, I'm quite a conceptual person. I, I like to take this idea maybe for a track or two tracks, but then I turn to something else, you know, because my whole idea is about freedom, about anarchy, about surprise, you know, and about adventure. The greying godfather of the anarchy. See? <laughs>
I'm always interested in what music people listen to, and I'd like to go right back to your early days and you tell me what music your parents listened to when you were growing up. Well, they listened to a lot of like hippie-ish music. I, I, I um, remember one time, like in uh, in the early 70s, they had like this, uh, like, in the summertime, when the uh, Mungo Jerry. Mungo and they Jerry, were really now there is a blast from the past. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Uh -huh. And I kind of like it because it's all like jip, 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 jip. Deep, 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 yeah, yeah, a very yeah. rhythmical record. <laughs> but then also, uh, my father would listen to Kraftwerk. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, I remember that, you know, like the Autobahn. That was, uh, was great uh, something, that was you great know. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, and then, yeah. but also the Rolling Stones, I remember. Um, but that was for me mostly fascinating because of that cover with that big cake and they were standing on top. Get yeah, your I, Ya Ya's out, I think that is the name uh, of that record, but I'm not sure anyway. I'm not sure, I haven't seen it since 73 or something. If, if, if your parents were hippies, yeah. sort of anti-authoritarian mm -hmm. people, and you are by, in, by spirit sort of an anarchist, mm -hmm. which is what you've just been telling me, mm -hmm. how did you rebel against your parents? Because they were already anti-establishment. Yeah, well, but that's, that's where the punk vibe comes in. For the, then, you know, when you had like, my, <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, like, my parents wanted me to have long hair. <laughs> you know, see? <laughs> like, oh, don't cut up your long hair. Yeah. You know, I so don't, how my, do you my rebel? My parents weren't against unhappy your... that I had long hair. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, see? Yeah. Mm. See? Um, um, so, like, the rebellion is like, cut off your hair. You, you know, were going to tell me about the punk bands. Tell me about the. You, by, by the age of 14, you were in a punk yeah, band. Yeah, that's right. I, I was the bass player. You were the bass player. Right. Oh. And, you know, and you know, like I had heroes like Jean Jacques Burnell of The Stranglers, mm -hmm. Sid Vicious, of course. He couldn't play the bass, but you know, he held it so deep. I love that. You know, <laughs> that you play your bass down here. You know? yes. I love that. And then you, so you were in, a, you were in a punk band. Yes. On the bass. Yeah. And then, and also on the synthesizer. Ah. So that, like we that's already it, because I was going to ask you, how do you get from punk to techno? Yeah. Because well, they, they're like two different worlds, as far as uh, I can yeah, tell. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, that's the interesting thing. The the early German new wave, uh, and also in the British, but in the German maybe even more so, we had a big influence from uh, synthesizer music. You know, you had groups, groups like DAF, you had mm -hmm. groups like Der Plan. From England, you would have groups like um, a Fat Gadget, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, like a lot of groups, uh, uh, like Throbbing Gristle or stuff that would, uh, a couple Revoltaire, they oh. always, uh, you know, had like, just a beatbox and just a squeaky sound and just a vocoder or something. So uh, electronic new wave uh, was already like, I mean, I, I'm not a punk from 76, okay. but from 79, yeah. 80. And yep. these days, you know, it was like, uh, it, uh, it was like a, 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 a platform for all types of new avant-gardistic music. Yeah. You know, so. Okay, so while you were doing all that, the next step was you left your hometown of Munster mm -hmm. and you came to live in Berlin. Yeah. What year was that? Well, uh, I came here already as a as a punk tourist. Like, like kids from uh, from West Germany would uh, they were like a little bit alternative or whatever yeah. would always uh, like you know would always go to Berlin you mm -hmm. know because that was the place where the mecca of of German youth culture yeah. you know yeah. so you had all kinds of you know like. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there's one German youth uh, movement called Die Popper. <laughs> the, uh, you know, you had that, you had uh, a rockabilly people, you had uh, punk rockers, you had uh, new romantic people, you had whatever, you know, gothic, whatever kind of... Okay, so that's the, that, that was know. the music that was going on. Yeah. But Ber what, tell me about Berlin at the time when you arrived here. Berlin in the 1980s, because this was a city that still had a wall around it. Yeah, yeah, right. Huh? I mean, one good reason to go for, like, um, a young male uh, uh, person would have been, uh, you, would, uh, there, uh, you wouldn't have to go to the army. Uh -huh. You know, that, that's one uh, uh, one reason. That's why Berlin would attract like well people that have have a different concept in life and wouldn't take the the normal way. Because like on the other hand, like Berlin obviously was a place where uh, it was not the top career place. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. also in music or whatever. You yeah. know, because it was just that island surrounded by a wall. It would rather attract weirdos. Okay. Yeah. 
the weirdo in you. I'm going to, uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about what happened after that, going from the 1980s into the 1990s in just a short bit. I'd like to come forward to now, to, 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 to where you are now. We've mentioned the album, Gutterstrasse already, uh, Streets of the Gods, yeah? Let's just get a clip from the album and listen to, uh, listen to one track from the album, just a wee little bit, yeah? And then you can tell me a little bit about it, yeah? I know. Here we go. Max, yeah, yeah. Westbam. That's a, it, I like the album very, very much indeed. I have to say, yeah. And you talked earlier about sort of being, you, seeing yourself as a conceptual artist, yes. a, a musician, producer. Mm -hmm. Was the word you used? And when I was listening to the album, listened to it an awful lot the last week while I've been doing my research, it seemed to me that it's a concept album. To use a little bit of an old-fashioned term, yeah. would you accept that? Yes, yeah. Well, you know, like for me, an album, doing an album is always an adventure, and I try to not repeat myself too much. And the, the concept of that album has to do with the fact that I've, I've been DJing now for 30 years, you know, so I wanted to do something, not just another Tool album or something that I could easily throw in my mix, but something that would reflect my experience of nightlife with, over the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so to see it from a very distant perspective, almost like a, a view on the nightlife seen from outer space, you know? <laughs> so that, that's, uh, that's, and that's basically the concept. So I, I tr uh, you know, like I try to get together all these different kind of voices, you know, and I've been very ambitious, not just to take certain singers from a certain background, but bring together like voices of the world, you know, like from different ages yep. and different musical uh, experiences and trying to melt it into one big concept album. But I'll tell know? you what, that was the danger yeah. because you had all these very, yeah. very different voices yeah, yeah. and it was, and I can imagine it was very yeah. difficult to get a unity out of that. But that's, I that's I exactly think you've done the that, point. Yeah. Max, West Bam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you were there. Yeah, we just had this panorama of the 1990s. Yeah, mm -hmm. what did it mean to you? What does it mean to you when you look back? Well, it was the the age of euphoria, you know, like, and Berlin was a symbol for that. And that's why I think whether, like, all the importance of Berlin, also for youth culture in that decade came from, basically, and the fame that uh, that Berlin has until today as, a, like, a nightlife city and a city of all this, yeah. you know, uh, um, uh, of these sensations, that's, that's um, coming from the 90s. And with the wall coming down, you had this age of, you know, especially with the kids from East Germany mm -hmm. celebrating. You had the idea, well, you know, you know, the, this idea, the end of history, now everybody's going to live free. Uh, uh, you know, everybody can have like a great job, have choices, have chances, you and know. Then. And yeah. then, at the end of the decade, mm -hmm. because what you're talking about is yeah. what events at the beginning of the yeah. decade, essentially, yeah. from the fall of the Berlin like, Wall in yeah. 1989. This is yeah. where the feel for that decade began, this city. And then at the end of the decade, yeah, yeah. That, you've got 9-11. That, that's exactly right. A totally right. different mood. That's 9-11 stopped that feeling. And you, you could uh, see that in the music. is no, You know, like, um, that uh, euphoric... Uh, um, uh, music that was uh, electro music that was driven so much by the big rave signals that would signal oh great times are coming yeah. that went away and gave uh, space to this quiet minimal uh, music that would reflect people aren't so sure of themselves of their society you know other people don't like us so much maybe we don't have the best system well let's stick among ourselves let's meet in little clubs and let's be quiet let's not you know the the whole idea you want to express to the world how great everything is mm -hmm. that all went away and gave room to this 
a little bit more pessimistic, a little bit more quiet, a little bit more private idea. A private know? experience, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting because you were involved in the Love Parade, you've mentioned the Love Parade already, which began in Berlin mm -hmm. and went right through the decades, yeah. yeah, and then moved away from Berlin. Yeah. And by 2010, it was actually being staged in the western yeah. German city of Duisburg, mm -hmm. as you well, well know. Well, yeah? well they, they, they took it from Berlin and they would change it around the Ruhr area. Mm -hmm. So it, they wanted to take it to a new city in that area exactly. yeah. every year. Yeah. So it, they first had it in Essen and then they moved to Dortmund. And the, on that tragic year, they had moved it to Duisburg. Let's just explain for the viewers so that they know. I think very, many of our viewers will remember the, yeah. the, the, this terrible catastrophe yeah. at the love parade I mean it's it's a it's an event called a love parade yeah, yeah? there's a stampede yeah 21 people are killed hundreds were injured mm -hmm. terrible scenes yeah. yeah I think what was it how did you first hear about this story what can you remember the moment when people told you what was happening well um, I, I flew in from my holidays in Mallorca typical German um, and um, on my arrival I get messages and they said, well, it's so sad that things would end this way, you know. And I didn't understand it at first because I had decided for myself that it would be my last love rate because I felt a little bit alienated with the not new people that did it. And I felt, no, this is not exactly my thing no more. So I'm going to stop. And I was the last one of the original people who was there. The year before, I'd seen... I stood backstage, I didn't know anybody no more. And I felt like I, I don't want to be a part, I can't really be a part of this no more. So it was my personal goodbye. So when I get the message, uh, well, it's so sad that things stop. I thought, well, you know, but it's going to go on because I didn't realize. I thought people were talking to me about my personal goodbye to the love rate. Yeah. So that was, uh, uh, and then it slowly dropped on me what was happening. Uh, and then, uh, well, I went to the hotel and then uh, then they phoned me up and said, don't you want to play no more? The police said, we have to keep it going, you know? And I thought, do I have to play now? You didn't, For security you, reasons? You didn't, or you didn't play. And then I decided, no, this is not right, you know? I, just, I, just, first, you didn't play. Yeah, yeah. I know that, you didn't yeah. play. Just tell me what your emotion, give me one word for your emotion, how you actually felt when you realised what had happened there. Well, well, it's, 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 you know, you can't explain. That's just a shock, you know. A shock moment is where you you don't understand really or, you you know, you're just standing was, there thinking, what's happening? It was you know? incomprehensible. Yeah, right, you know. And that's why uh, when they ca called me up and said, do you have to play? I thought, maybe I have to go and play. And I thought, like, no, I don't want to play. Maybe I have to for security reasons, for safety reasons, you know. Um, but then I decided, no, they can play music on a lower level. And I didn't understand why they would keep it up. They, yeah. at that point... I don't think anybody did. I don't think mm -hmm. anybody did. Okay. Uh, you know, that, and that, that for, for me to some extent, you know, because I know people said st stuff like, well, these people who died would have... Uh, uh, liked us to party on in their spirit, oh, stuff like that. Oh, you know, I, no, I thought no, that's disgusting. No. You know, can't yeah. you can't, uh, uh, okay. you know, like, okay. Let's leave it there, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. But thank you for sharing that with us. Cheers. We have West Bam with us, and he is, of course, a DJ with 30 years of experience. So the question has to be, have you ever been invited to be a, I don't know what, a teacher, a lecturer, a professor of DJing? I mean, yeah, I think I've done this once or twice, but I, I think it's something, you know, t people trying to make a business out of teaching people how to be a DJ, but it's uh, it's not something that you can learn a lot about no? that job. I don't think, you, you know. You don't think you could teach well, me to maybe, be a DJ? You could teach me the technical aspects of yeah, being yeah, a DJ. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah? But that's, you know, I think like what can be taught to people, you can teach them maybe in one or two days. Yeah. And the rest is experience and personality, you know. Okay. You once said you once talked about something called the art of the DJ. Mm -hmm. What is the art of a DJ? Well, you know, look, for me, it, um, it happened in the early 80s that I, uh, you know, suddenly I became aware of the whole idea that you could actually not just make a, a nice connection between two records, but mixing records and 
inventing a new music by it. And that's for me the art, you know? If it's uh, not a, a practical thing, you mix a record so people don't have to stop dancing or they don't lose the rhythm or anything. That's the practical side, but you can do it to create something new. And uh, that's when the, the art of the DJ kicks When in. you stopped becoming a punk and moved into techno and you yeah. started DJing, you, mm -hmm. you had two turntables mm -hmm. and you had a pile of records. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I, at, when I started, I started not with a technique. When I started, there were like maybe 10 DJs in Germany that could mix at all anyway. And in my hometown of Münster, nobody could do it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to do it. So my first thing was like playing my favorite records, which yes. is something, which is a good start for a DJ. If you have your own taste, your own musical world, and that's what you want to bring across. That's the most uh, important thing, I think, until today. Yeah. You know, whether you use MP3s or records, that's, that's not the question. Whether you mix them or you cut them or whatever you do, you know, if you have an idea of what you want to uh, tell people with your music, you know, what you want to select, that's until today the best thing and all DJ. those records that you used to have way back when 30 years ago what happened to the records where are they now because you've uh, gone digital now yes but i can't get rid of my records i don't want to i you still so have like I, uh, when i bought my new flat i bought a little flat under my flat just for my records you have a, so you, they, you have uh, a flat uh, my, you have an apartment my, my, here my in berlin full records. of records yeah, yeah. right uh, that's you know like that's a bit of luxury but you know i think my records have taken me all the way you know yeah. and i owe my whole career to my records so i can't throw them away or sell them Invite so me. they it, have it, like a like you know I, and every once in a while i go through them uh, i pick one up and i have a turntable so i might you know put mm -hmm. one on Invite me around one day to have a look at this. Right. Just the apartment with the Just records. The, that right. fascinates me, yeah? Um, you made a lot of money. You were very successful. You are very successful, yeah? My feeling is that you probably don't ever need to work again. That's correct. But you still go out mm -hmm. pretty much mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, I hear, uh -huh. and you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Do the th you do your thing. You go to an, a DJ office and do your DJing, or, or you, you, you compose, or what do you do? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, like, I, uh, I do something, you know, even like people ask me when I don't have a release for some time and they fancy I just sit around or sit by the pool and chill with my drinks. But it's, it's not like that. I, I do this because it's fun for me, you know, and like, uh, I define myself by my work to some extent, so yeah. uh, um, that's something that I will uh, keep on doing. I don't know whether I can be a DJ by the age of 80, but I, I will still like care about the music. Interesting and I, that you mentioned the, get, the, the aspect of getting older, because I read that you, uh, you yourself fear that you're going to need a hearing aid quite soon. Um, well, that's what the doctor said to me, oh, <laughs> testing yeah. when he tested my ears. But you know, um, there's a German saying, wo gehobelt wird, da fallen Späne. Meaning, well, if you, you, you're gonna use your ears the way I used mine, you you're know, gonna pay a price. You're gonna have to pay a price at some point, you know. Okay, right so, uh, but uh, but it's we're not quite there yet, and you know, I'm I'm trying I'm I'm trying to keep everything so that my beloved ears stay with me for some more time. You're trying, you're trying to keep the volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. <laughs>
when they ask why they left, they say, well, because we're not uh, uh, in agreement with all of the stuff that's happening in the church. You know, if I'm honest, uh, in those days, the, the reason for me was the church tax, you know? Yeah. You know, that is not to say that I agree with everything the church does, you know? Uh, um, I, I have a fascination with religion. I, I read religious uh, 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 books, but not only the Bible, but also the uh, Buddhist or the uh, Jewish or the um, also the Islamic. The Quran. Quran, yeah. you know. I, uh, for me, you know, there's some wisdom and some fascination in, in, in all religion. Mm -hmm. And just kind of make your mind up about like metaphysic things is, is not a bad thing, you know. But um, it's, you know, in that way, I guess I'm typical German, you know, that like the whole church cage, the way it is, doesn't really apply to me. It's very interesting listening to you saying all that because you are very typically German because a lot of people are leaving the church in <laughs> Germany, but the yeah. church still remains very, very important in Germany. You know? mm -hmm. Okay, we normally finish the show with a quiz at the end of the show where I give you quick questions and quick answers and you give me a quick answer. Okay. Yeah? What I've got today is I've got um, two questions for okay. you. Techno, yeah? Is it a movement, a religion or a party? A, pop, a big party, a dance party. It's all three. It's all three. And who's got the better taste in music? We've been talking about parents and children. Who's got the better taste in music, you or your kids? Me, 100%. <laughs> Don't tell them when you get home, OK? Uh, but I have to teach them. Okay. One day they, they'll get there. OK. That is your lot with the very engaging Mr Techno, Wes Bam. Uh, there's more talk in Germany, including my blog on, uh, and our archive uh, on our website. So go there, check it out. If you've enjoyed the show as much as I have, he's been a great guest. Come back next week. Until then, bye-bye and tschüss. <laughs>